Thank you, Mark. Dear friends of the ICD, I would like to start by thanking the ICD and more specifically, Director Mark Dumfries for the organization of this uh, annual conference. Our annual conference is a good occasion to reflect on the contribution that the Institute can make to the key challenges of peace and living together. I will refer to this now. I would like to start by referring to the celebration this year of the United Nations 70th anniversary. And this anniversary is important to us since the ICD's objectives are enshrined in the United Nations foundational objectives. The ICD is in fact strengthening its links with the United Nations. Last month I met in New York in representation of the ICD with representatives of the Alliance of Civilizations of the United Nations and with UN women to study the possibility of working together. The United Nations is the international community's most advanced project. It's work for peace, to support the most vulnerable and to sustain human rights has been the most important of all. The United Nations was born after the horror of two world wars that started in Europe, provoked by sovereign and ideological confrontations. We have just uh, commemorated Hiroshima and Nagasaki 70 years ago. All human, right, all human beings must be aware of this horrendous episode in history. In its brief history, the United Nations has prevented wars, solved conflicts, and brought hope to the most vulnerable. And it has three great milestones. The San Francisco Charter, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and the Millennium Goals, which have just become the Sustainable Development Goals. In the last 70 years, we haven't suffered another global confrontation and the so-called Cold War has ended. But conflict, violence, and terror continue to pour an incredible amount of suffering onto a great proportion of humanity. 200 million people live under the threat of war or generalized terror. And in the last few years, we have seen a worrying increase in violence. In 2010, 50,000 people died in armed conflicts. In 2014, nearly 200 million. In this same period, victims of terrorism increased 20%, reaching 20,000 people. Today, there are more than 60 million displaced human beings, 1% of the global population. This negative evolution in the recent years is due in part to the aftermath of the so-called Arab Spring, a movement that engendered great expectations, but due to the lack of alternative projects and the shores of various reactionary movements has thrown the countries involved into very serious crisis. If we analyze the main existing conflicts, we can draw a series of useful conclusions to address our tax for peace. 
the majority of wars, conflicts, and terrorist acts are happening in Asia and Africa, unlike last century's violence episodes. Europe and America are areas of lesser conflict, but as we have recently witnessed dramatically, can also be the potential stage for terrorist threats. The existing conflicts are in their majority caused by religious or ethnic issues. In the past, they were sparked by ideological or imperialistic conflicts. Wars and terrorism acts occur mainly in underdeveloped countries and peoples because poverty often accompanies violence and reversely development and social cohesion generate pacific societies. A telling figure is that 80% of conflicts worldwide take place in areas that suffer desertification. Once more, this justifies the need to commit to decisive action to mitigate climate change. The most violent conflicts take place in weak and failed states. Money laundering and the arms trade are also key factors in the spread of violence and terror. Normally, today, democratic states and nations don't incite violence, wars, and terrorism. It is the work of radical movements that go beyond frontiers of international, interreligious, and interethnic conflicts, or of course, of criminal organizations. Only a few weeks ago, Paris suffered the pain of barbarism, just as the United States, England, or Spain have in their day in Europe. And we are grieving with France. We feel what they feel. We honor the victims. We honor all victims of terrorism. And we must remember once again that there is no politics in terrorism, only the extraction, only hate. And that we must fight terrorism with all the power of the rule of law, with all its strength, but only a great process of international cooperation will overcome it. A process that must include a solution to the situation in the Middle East, in the Middle East, and that must promote a culture of different religions and ideologies living together peacefully. Religion doesn't kill, hate does. Fanatism does. That is why culture and understanding are so necessary. There is then a new map of violence and war. And we must proclaim once more that war, whatever form it might take, is horrendous. Violence is always a road to destruction. To kill doesn't defend an idea, a faith, or a flag. It is an act of destruction. Only states can use force and only respecting international legality. That is why I believe that peace is more than a task. It is more than an ethical obligation. It is the condition that identifies us as a civilization living together in a global order. 
I believe there are four, four great conditions for peace. First, the political conditions. We must strengthen multilateralism, cooperation, international organizations, and international legality. We must thus strengthen diplomacy and dialogue. The processes in Cuba and Iran are good examples of the right way forward. A new multilateralism demands a new global security commitment with the USA, China, the European Union, Russia, India, the United Nations, and the all international organizations, all regional organizations in Asia, in Africa, in the Arabic world. And uh, we must start with the Middle East to fight and isolate days. We must also encourage the birth of a new Palestinian state along with the commitment to the safety of the state of Israel. Second, social conditions. It is fundamental that we achieve the new sustainable development goals that were just agreed in the United Nations, where there is extreme poverty, stability is very volatile. Third, cultural conditions. It is necessary that we defend an idea of understanding of peacefully living together of cultures and civilizations. The alliance of civilization is a good framework for this. We must work to educate the younger generations. We must work to unite religions in a message of peace. Fourth, institutional conditions. We must eradicate tax havens and we must work against illegal arm and drug trafficking, opening a new era of reduction of conventional and nuclear arms and fix a horizon for the latter's disappearing. The road, the peace, involves the coming together of the international community, the commitment to peace of the superpowers, the strengthening of international organizations. Peace is the greatest challenge we have ahead, a challenge that we can only address with an attitude of cooperation. Dialogue and international cooperation must be the hallmark of the new historical cycle we are living. Because each word, each dialogue, each action, each time we speak out against violence, any king of violence, each time we speak in favor of peace and cooperation, we are building a more peaceful world. And this is where I believe cultural diplomacy and hence the ICD comes into play where we can grasp all its meaning. The ICD must continue participating in and promoting events and encounters in the countries where cultural diplomacy can open up new spaces for dialogue and cooperation, like in Cuba. And this is why we organized last October in Madrid a very productive conference with the participation of political, cultural, and business representatives from Cuba, the United States, and the European Union or like in Turkey, a central country for peace, a central country for peace, 
to who, whom we must give all our attention and support. And for the new year ahead, we are working with the Islamic Conference on a project that will, we hope, contribute to the integration and training of the refugees sitting in Germany. And we must also focus our energy on launching new cooperation channels with organizations like the United Nations, which I referred to earlier on. In this framework, we will develop new initiatives for peace and the UN Sustainable Goals, like interreligious dialogue, the expansion of effective equality between women and me and the fight against climate change. The ICD will initiate new projects and initiatives while it continues also to, to develop its master and graduate programs and its numerous activities for culture diversity. Dear friends, there is much war ahead. Peace, peace and living together in harmony are our task. Peace and harmony are the ICD's task. It is what gives sense to our presence here. All our efforts, all our projects. I invite you, I invite you to unite in these efforts and collaboration. I would like to exhort you to work on imagination. It is worth it. I am convinced that it is worth it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Zapatero. And if I could ask you also to remain on the stage, we'd be most happy to take some questions and comments. Uh, I'm sure you've inspired uh, quite a few. We'll take as many as we can. Ladies first, I think I saw you first. I'm gonna just squeeze. Actually, we have a second microphone, which might make it easier if maybe one of my colleagues could help me. Hello, thank you for your speech. Um, I'm Irina Mikhailo, I'm from Ukraine. I would like to ask a question related to the refugees and Spain. Um, Spain has not accepted a lot of refugees compared to some other European Union countries. And in its relocation plan, which involves accepting around 14,000 refugees, shows to be a slow procedure. But on the other side, Spain states it's one of the countries of the EU that receives most immigrants, hence it states it's, it is doing whatever it can with the refugee problem. So my question is, uh, what is your opinion about how Spain is handling this situation? And uh, my other question is, would you increase the number of refugees that uh, should be accepted by Sp Spain, considering its position right now? Thank you. Okay, are you Spanish and make a question? Um, in Spanish. Okay, um... Yeah, I'm going to translate into English. España ha sido uno de los países que más inmigración ha recibido en los últimos 20 años. Uno de los países de Europa y del mundo. En concreto, en aproximadamente una década... Cinco millones. Um, he wants to say that Spain has received um, um, five million immigrants in the last 20 years, so he is still receiving a um, huge name of, of immigrants still. Debo, debo decir que es uno de los países, en mi opinión, con más capacidad de integración de la inmigración. And he's able to um, include all these people in our country. Um, we are able to... Uh, um, take it in and um, with our conditions. Hay, hay muy pocos ejemplos de hechos de xenofobia. There's no xenophobic um, in this in, in Spain, so there's no any case. 
y no hay un partido de extrema derecha, un partido nacionalista de extrema derecha xenófobo que haga de la inmigración un tema. And considering uh, right wins, we don't have a really um, extremist uh, political party in Spain. Casi España empieza a ser una excepción, dado lo que pasa en muchos países europeos. So, um, it seems to be an exception considering other countries in, in Europe. En España había un partido que no apoyaba, por ejemplo, eh, que los inmigrantes, incluso sin papeles, sin, sin estar legalizados, tuvieran acceso a la sanidad pública. Y ese partido ha tenido que cambiar porque la opinión pública lo censura radicalmente. Um, we even had a country that didn't allow immigrants who didn't have like, required documents to um, access uh, public health insurance. Uh, but now it needs to change because uh, our people, like Spanish people, do not like this. So it was to be really um, dramatically changed. Sobre refugiados. I think there no ha habido gran polémica in Spain sobre los refugiados como consecuencia que están en Europa, que han llegado a Europa de la guerra básicamente de Siria. Like with refugees coming from Syria, um, it's the same situation right now in Spain. Conforme al reparto establecido por la Unión Europea, nos corresponden en torno a 13.000, 13.400, creo recordar. Um, we should uh, receive like uh, 13.000 uh, refugees according to European um, According to European Union um, law, so to say. Es verdad que hasta ahora han llegado muy pocos, apenas unas decenas. And we have received like not so many, like actually, um, really uh, little. Pero eh, España está está dispuesta, está esperando, está abierta. But we would like to um, receive them. We are willing to help them to to live in our country. Hay quien dice. Hay quien dice que los refugiados sirios, la mayoría, se quieren quedar en Alemania y en Holanda y en Francia, no ir hacia el sur de Europa. It's been said that they want to stay in Germany and in um, North Europe rather than going to southern countries. Bueno, yo les invito también a que vayan a España. But they are more than welcome to come to our country, to Spain. Es un país acogedor. It's a really warming uh, country. Hay varias ciudades que tienen puestos carteles Welcome Refugees. There are uh, many banners uh, when, where it says "Welcome refugees." Sí, creo sinceramente que somos uno de los países hoy en día más de a, que, que mejor acoge. A and los we are extranjeros. Yeah, we are able to do it and uh, ready and willing to um, receive them. Thank you. Let's, let's take, thank you for that. I'd like, I'd like to share the microphone with a fellow advisory board member, Dr. Solomon Passi, former foreign minister of Bulgaria. I do not have a question. I wanted, uh, because I'm a person who is coming from the real politics, I want to say just a word about uh, Prime Minister Zapatero. I was foreign minister in the government of King Simeon II when this prime minister invited us to Madrid. And I can assure you that uh, such a leadership changed the relations between our two countries, which are on the two opposite points of the European Union, for just two days. I'm absolutely impressed by the dynamism and the leadership of the government which uh, uh, Prime Minister Zapatero was leading. And I just want to make use of this occasion to say thank you. And I put specially for you the tie of the Spanish presidency of the European Union. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Solon. Is there maybe one more or two more uh, brief comments or questions? I want to try to make sure we have voices that, that haven't yet spoken yet. I want to spread it around. Let's start maybe in the back and then we can go. Thank you, I'm Silvanus Malaho from Kenya, East Africa. I have just a question. I'm wondering, as much as uh, people from Islamic states are being accommodated or, and integrated in European Union countries, they are being received, which is a good idea, being accommodated, which is a good idea. I, do, I wonder if there is a program of helping to train, to teach civic education for them to abandon vandalism or extremism from their mind to change their, that culture because it's a culture which has been inbuilt in them. The culture of maybe Islamic vandalism, Islamic extremism, such a kind of thing. 
many years without this civic education and brainwashing their mind from that kind of culture to come out of them. Many years to come, or a few years to come, after they have settled, and this culture has been breeding from one person to another person, then it started now exploding. Sometime it started exploding in Europe and other parts. How safe and peaceful the world will be. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias por, por tu pregunta, porque me parece que tocas el, el corazón del problema. Hay dos cuestiones que, sobre las que Europa tiene que, que abrir un debate muy serio. La primera, hay que decir que los líderes políticos y las fuerzas políticas que utilizan la inmigración, el islamismo, como una bandera patriota, partidista, como una bandera partidista, están cometiendo un gravísimo delito de lesa patria. Um, there are two questions to be discussed by the um, European um, Union, and it is not a good idea to use uh, patriotism, um, using flags uh, that um, are trying to show nationalism and radicalism. Europa es Europa porque tiene ideales, principios, valores. No es una región geográfica, es ante todo una cultura. Una cultura de derechos humanos, una cultura de convivencia, una cultura que no es ni cristiana ni católica, que es universal. Si eso se traiciona, se estará empezando el fin de Europa. Um, Europe is Europe because it's based on um, multiculturalism and shares values of different religions and different cultures, different languages, and that's what needs to be um, preserved. If it doesn't really preserve all this multiculturalism, then it could be the end of the European Union. Cuando vemos que jóvenes de 23, 27 y 29 años son los asesinos en Francia de los atentados que hemos conocido, la pregunta que hay que hacerse es ¿cuál, ¿cuáles son las razones que llevan a esos jóvenes nacidos en Francia, nacidos en Francia, a ser terroristas asesinos? Nadie nace terrorista. Nadie nace terrorista. Um, we need to question if um, why people, young people who are actually European, um, what is the reason that leads them to commit um, this terrorism? What is the problem? And, and because they are European people, it's not that they uh, come from different countries, they are born here. And what is the reason that leads them to commit such a terror um, act? Because we are not born terrorists. Mm joven de padres magrebís, marroquíes en Francia, un joven, en muchos casos no se siente integrado, no se siente que se le considera un francés con todas las consecuencias y tampoco se siente alguien de Marruecos o de Argelia. Tiene un gran problema de identidad a lo que se une un problema social, de cohesión social. Um, someone whose parents come from different countries, such as Morocco or no European countries, um, they don't really feel integrated into the European society and they don't really feel um, this identity. Um, so there is a problem and that must be the, the, um, the beginning of the problem and to commit these acts. Por tanto, los países europeos, si quieren preservar que el extremismo no crezca, no crezca en su suelo, tienen que hacer una política de más integración, de más movilidad social, de más movilidad social, de más oportunidades para los jóvenes que han venido o que tienen un origen de fuera. Educación, educación, prevención, 
he oído al, ministro, al primer ministro francés que iban a crear en Francia un centro de educación y de prevención del radicalismo. Esta es la dirección. Esta es la dirección. En España. Perdón. <risa> Um, in order to stop this, to stop this terrorism and fanatism from people that comes from, uh, whose parents come from different countries, um, Europe needs to integrate these people and to help them integrate through education, through social mobility. And she just said that the, um, fr like the first, um, yes, the minister said uh, in France they are trying to, um, yeah, to create one of these centers to stop radicalism. So that's the, the first step to stop terrorism in Europe. Saben que gané las elecciones en, en el año 2004, tres días después de un gravísimo atentado terrorista islamista en Madrid, con 192 muertos. Um, he won the elections in the year 2004, after, three days after a huge uh, terrorist act from the Islamic world and, and the trains in Madrid. Mi primera tarea fue que la sociedad española no re reaccionara con rechazo a las personas con religión islámica. The first thing he, um, he did was to, com to try to convince Spanish people not to judge um, people um, that has to do with um, Islamic religions because they are not uh, guilty for that. They don't belong to this uh, religion. Y promoví una fundación llamada Pluralismo y Convivencia. He created an organization called Pluralismo y um, Convivencia. Que integra todas las religiones minoritarias en España. Integrating all the minor religions uh, coexisting in Spain. De colaboración con el gobierno. Collaborating with the government. Apoyamos y financiamos sus actividades culturales de prevención del radicalismo, de educación. Funding all the activities related to education and social mobility. Pero directamente con la comunidad islámica. Dire, um, directly uh, linked to the um, Islamic community. Con la comunidad judía. With Jews. Todos juntos. Everyone together. Y ha sido un gran instrumento de estabilidad, de equilibrio, de calma. And it brought um, stability to our country. Y lo que hice también después de esa victoria electoral y después del atentado terrorista fue retirar las tropas de Irak de la guerra de Irak. And after winning the election, the first thing um, the first thing he did was to um, get rid of the troops, uh, Spanish troops in Iraq. Declarar la guerra al terrorismo, declarar la guerra al terrorismo suele ser el camino más directo para prolongarla indefinidamente. Declaring war to terrorism, it's a long way and the worst one would lead to an end. El terrorismo se combate con la fuerza. Se combate con la fuerza. Terrorism is to be combated with a force. Pero solo se gana, solo se gana. But you con, cannot... Con la cultura, con la educación, con la cohesión social, con el diálogo, con el reconocimiento. But you cannot, it can only be won with um, education, culture, social mobility, pluralism, knowledge. Esta es la experiencia. That's the experience. Es la experiencia que yo tengo. His experience. Preveniendo terrorismo islamista. Uh, trying to prevent Islamic um, uh, terrorism. Y trabajando por el fin del terrorismo que teníamos en nuestro país, que era el terrorismo de ETA, otro terrorismo. Un terrorismo nacionalista, separatista. And working to put an end to a different kind of terrorism that we have in Spain called ETA, which is um, based on nationalism. La guerra contra el terrorismo lanzada por, por Estados Unidos después de las Torres Gemelas nos ha hecho extender por muchos años el terrorismo islamista. The word the United States declared after a World Trade Center um, attack has just uh, led us to an ending, an ending um, war against terrorism. Esta lucha nos costará al menos tres o cuatro décadas. 
and we are going to be fighting this, this declaration of war to still uh, 30 or 40 years. Para haber muy reducido el fenómeno del terrorismo islamista. To finally put an end to, to Islamic terrorism. Y no hay otro camino que el diálogo. There is no other way apart from dialogue. Tenemos que entrar en el corazón, en el corazón, allí donde se genera el radicalismo islamista, en sus razones, en las fuentes que lo alimenta. We need to directly go to the to the focal point of Islamism to try to defeat it, where it's created. Porque la historia demuestra que donde están los valores donde están los ideales, donde están los principios, si se mantienen con coherencia, siempre al final ganan. Um, focusing on its values and trying to defeat its values is the only way to, to win this war on terrorism. Pero cada palabra cuenta. But every word is important. Cada gesto cuenta. Every gesture is important. Debemos ser muy conscientes, desde luego los líderes políticos, And political leaders need to be um, to keep that in mind. Pero también los universitarios. But also university students. Que siempre ofrecer la paz, siempre ofrecer el diálogo, siempre no responder a la ira con venganza es el camino acertado. The only peace and um, not trying to count a revenge is the only way to 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 finish this. And then, and then if I can, the final brief question and the final brief response, Lord Jack McConnell, the, first, the former First Minister of Scotland, member of the House of Lords, advisory board of the ICD. Thank you very much. I know that we all try not to comment too much on our successors, uh, but it does seem to me that we spend a lot of time here at ICD talking about the kind of approach that we all took when we were in leadership positions. And yet today we have a crisis of leadership in European politics, uh, particularly on the left. And we have the rise of the extreme right, we have the centre-right moving towards them politically, and we have the centre-left essentially running scared of public opinion. And I wonder what you might say about that situation. We've seen this summer a terrible crisis uh, of leadership on the whole issue of uh, the refugees and legitimate migrants and moving across the world for, to try and improve their lives. Uh, but that's only one crisis amongst many. And I wonder if you have any words at all for how we can re-energize uh, and rediscover courage and leadership, uh, in these, particularly on the center left, but amongst the progressive forces in uh, the European Union and the rest of Europe. Pienso sinceramente que eh, la Unión Europea tiene problemas básicos por un crecimiento rápido en términos históricos, por convertirse en una gran unión en términos históricos. Um, European Union has problems because it has grown really fast. Eh, yo he estado ocho años sentado en el Consejo Europeo. He has been sitting in the European Congress uh, for eight years. Y debo decir que siempre, en el último minuto, el, 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 el alma, el espíritu europeísta salía para llegar a un acuerdo. Pero debemos ser eh, claros. Eh, hay un gobierno europeo, que es el Consejo, hay otro gobierno europeo que es la Comisión y hay 28 soberanías europeas actuando también. Um, there are many uh, parts regarding the European Union. There is the advisor, there is the um, 28 sovereigns still um, working together with the European Union. Bueno, esto hace muy difícil la respuesta a algunos problemas. Muy difícil y muy lenta. And that's why it's really difficult and, and it takes time to get uh, a final answer or a final solution. Por ejemplo, en la crisis. Regarding the crisis. Y uh, la crisis económica es un buen ejemplo de lo que tarda la Unión Europea en tomar las decisiones adecuadas. 
this economic crisis is an example to show how long it takes to get a, a, a final solution for a problem in the European Union. For example, in relation to a fund to help countries with problems, pues se tardaron aproximadamente tres años. Regarding uh, money to send to other countries to be revealed, it took like uh, three years to, to find this solution. En el papel del Banco Central Europeo, se tardaron tres años en hacer que ese Banco Central sea un Banco Central parecido a la Reserva Federal. Um, the Central European Bank, it also took three, uh, three years to be recognized as an official um, um, bank to, to uh, develop this um, solution that was found. O los avances en la Unión Económica. Yeah, or regarding progress in um, economic union. Bien, quiero decir, a la Unión Europea se la exige mucho, pero los 28 países no siempre estamos dispuestos a darle todo el poder para que actúe. So we are um, forcing the European Union to act, but the 28 countries um, are not willing to give the European Union all this power to act. El centro izquierda. ¿Cuál es el problema de la izquierda, de la socialdemocracia? So regarding um, right, uh, left-wing parties. Bueno, lo primero que debo decir que desde que tengo uso de razón soy de izquierda. That he is, uh, since he was born, a uh, member of the wind, uh, the left wing party. Pero desde que tengo uso de razón también vengo hablando de la crisis de la izquierda. But since also he was born, he was has been talking about this uh, left wing crisis. Es, la izquierda se interpela, se pregunta normalmente, ¿no? Um, left uh, left wing questions the whole time. Sin embargo, digamos que gobernamos en Francia. But we are governing, uh, we've got a government in France. Governamos in en, en Italia. In Italy. Estamos en coalición en Alemania. Working in, in Germany, trying to get there. Y espero que dentro de una semana podamos estar en España gobernando. And uh, fortunately, uh, in one week, we'll be in Spain also governing. Bueno, esto no está fácil, pero... <laughs> Which is not, is not easy. Eh, esa es la realidad. O sea, que tampoco... Bien, lo que demuestra Europa es que alterna bastante entre el centro derecha y la socialdemocracia. So Europe is um, the whole time alternating be um, between left wing and, re and right wing parties. Pero es verdad que la izquierda tiene un problema cuando hay una crisis como ahora fuerte para su conversación y diálogo con la sociedad. So um, the problem is the left wing also has uh, problems regarding um, economic crisis um, to, to dialogue. Porque la promesa de la izquierda el programa de la izquierda es siempre el avance social. Es la cuestión social, son los derechos sociales. Because the um, main point of the left wing is to work with um, society to, to um, try to improve the situation of society. Y ahora cuando hay un problema de, de crisis económica, esa promesa no es cumplible, es difícil. And when there is When there is an economic crisis, it's really difficult to still maintain uh, this promise of working with society. Ante todo, porque el crecimiento económico, el crecimiento económico de la Unión Europea es limitado en este momento. Because the um, economic growth of the European Union is limited. Es más, a pesar de que se habla de la austeridad de la política marcada por, por, por Merkel, Um, even though it is, uh, it is said um, that the Merkel's um, politics, yeah, it's uh, really hard. De los 20 países más endeudados del mundo, 17 son de la Unión Europea y 13 de la zona euro. Regarding the 20 uh, poorest countries in the, in the European zone, um, 13 um, are um, in the European Union. Bueno, la izquierda no puede cerrar los ojos ante esto. So left-wing parties cannot just um, um, don't work on it. ¿Cuál es el problema de fondo? So what's the problem? El problema de fondo es que Europa y en general Occidente tiene serios problemas para crecer con la fuerza que tuvo hace 20 años y por tanto para tener 
ingresos y política social suficiente. The problem is that today's European Union cannot grow um, as it used to do 20 years ago because it's, it has not the potential now to do it. ¿Por qué? Porque la globalización ha hecho despertar a los emergentes que cada día son más porcentaje en el PIB mundial. Why the question is uh, because um, developing countries has um, they have awakened and now they have also taken part in this debate. Hasta hace 30 años. Um, till uh, 30 years uh, from now. Till now, sir. Europa y Estados Unidos juntos. Europe and United States together. Siendo el 9-10% de la población de, del mundo. Being um, 9 or 10 percent of the um, whole population of the world representaba más del 50% del producto mundial. Um, they together represented the, um, more than 50% of the, um, in, the international um, um, PIB. Sí. Sí. Lo que está ocurriendo es un reequilibrio, un reequilibrio de la riqueza. So now uh, richness is going to be um, equilibrated. Porque los emergentes aportan más ya crecimiento, tienen capacidad tecnológica, se están desarrollando. Because um, they are developing countries now. Seamos claros, hasta hace 30 años el mundo era muy injusto, muy injusto en favor de Occidente. 30 years now ago the world was really unfair regarding um, Occident. Por eso está nuestro bienestar comprometido. And that's why we are compromised the welfare. Solo hay que ver China. China is an example. Ha sacado casi 500 millones de personas de la pobreza en los últimos 30 años. Um, working on poverty in the last 30 years. Pero todavía hoy tiene la renta per cápita que tenía Estados Unidos en 1900. Todavía hoy tiene la, la renta per cápita que tenía Estados Unidos en 1900, China. Um, In income per capita that the United States uh, a long time ago, he's making the yes. comparisons the income per capita of the United States. Okay, okay. Ese, ese es el problema. This is the problem. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, what's it? Okay. Um, excellent. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Excellent. All right, well, th thank you very, very okay. much, President Zapatero. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you again so much, President Zapatero, for your keynote address, for uh, extending this dialogue and exchange with us. We very much appreciated that. I know that you have inspired uh, all of us and in many ways, and uh, we look forward to continuing uh, to collaborate with you over the coming years. So if you could all please join me in expressing our sincere gratitude to the Honorable President Zapatero.